Oh, Carolan, of course. She beg and she more. Why don't I do more O oh, Carolan tunes? I guess it's because they are so popular and they're all over YouTube that really I haven't concentrated on those. I've also played them for years in the local session. Um, so pretty much most of the popular O oh, Carolan compositions I've played at some stage or other and know them. Um, of course, in O'Neill's rather wonderful book, the one which um, my copy <laughs> is on its way out, but there is this section, of course, there, O'Carolan compositions, and there are so many of them, um, some more well known than others. So yeah, I will I will try and put more of those up if you feel that would be interesting and I will try and put a simple lesson together to um, show you the way that I tackle playing those. So um, I will try and do more O'Carolan. Thank you. They are beautiful melodies. I do agree. Following on from that for a moment, um, the very first O'Carolan composition in this book by Chief O'Neill that who collected so many tunes um, is the lamentation or the lamentation of Owen Rowe O'Neill. I play that it's really lovely it's B flat <laughs> That's a nice tune. That's one I'm going to learn. Um, yeah, I was just reading that straight off the docks there. That's why there were a couple of mistakes. But hey, what a lovely tune. Okay, I will definitely start working on O'Carolan tunes. I haven't played that one before. So I must go through this book again. I've got loads of sheets of paper like this with tunes on. And I want to try and collate the best tunes I have, the ones that I've composed, the ones that you have given me feedback on that you've been enjoying playing, into a booklet. There have been so many requests now for a booklet. Um, one query that came in from the feedback earlier this week, why don't I have a Patreon site? Um, well, I've looked at it and a few of my friends have got them but I've always felt it's nice to share everything with everyone. However, if you do want to contribute to my channel, then I've set up now a simple PayPal me stroke peak fiddler and contribute whatever you like. It's entirely up to you. Um, but I was planning, I'm hoping to use whatever contributions do come in to getting this book self-published 
and underway so that it will be available hopefully via a distribution, an international distribution company, possibly Amazon, possibly another. I haven't really looked into that yet. But that's the route I'm taking at the moment. So if I can get funds to cover the cost of the publication, um, then I'll go ahead and produce whatever uh, we can. I've certainly got some feedback from your comments, which are the most popular tunes that I've um, recorded over the number of years. Um, and obviously those will be the ones that I will include in this collection of uh, tunes. So um, if you feel like contributing, thank you very much. It will help me along the road this year. I've been asked about the um, guitar tuner, the vi or rather guitar and violin tuner that I use. Now I wonder if you can see that. I wonder if that's coming across clearly. It's this one. It's on. Uh, this is an Android phone. Uh, nothing fancy about it. And this um, app is developed by A4 Tune Labs. I wonder if you can see that. It's a freebie, and it's excellent. Works very, very well indeed. Um, if you pull it up. I've got it set to violin at the moment and you can you can get a nice audible note. Plus you get this very nice uh, accurate type of tuner this bit here. Very handy indeed. Um, and funnily enough uh, I use it also for my guitar there it's set to guitar at the moment. Um, I go back there. It's there we are, guitar now, and I can use it on the five-string banjo. Where are we? Banjo there. That's on the banjo now. So that's five-string banjo, the G a G tuning, standard G tuning, and um, likewise, I can use it on viola. I can even use it on my bass. Uh, the four string bass guitar which is pretty good um, not many instruments will go that low actually so um, not tried it on the bass as such I tend to use my ears more on there um, there's even the dreaded ukulele <laughs> for those of you that play that uh, cello and something called a, a shamisen that sounds interesting sounds like um, some sort of oriental instrument. I don't know. Perhaps you'll correct me on that. No doubt you will. Anyway, so that's um, a tuner by a company called A4 Labs. Excellent. Excellent. And it didn't cost a penny. Absolutely amazing. I better be quiet though because they might hit see this video and think, oh, we need to charge £25 for that. Anyway, there you go. So that's that's the tuner that I use. This is an interesting one. Um, on a piece of music like this, this is the um, the blues tune that I put up a while ago. And um, those little letters there above the tune, those are actually the guitar chords. You'll see that on a lot of my music. So the little letters that you see above the musical stave are the guitar chords. I put them on there because I do play with guitar players and they do like to have the chords. So that's what they are basically on the musical notation. And this thing of Bob here, this um, crotchet that um, has the little sort of equal sign 140, basically that's um, beats per minute. So it's 140 beats per minute is the um, equal length to a crotchet. So um, generally, if, if it says 140, that's what I set my sequencer to, or my ABC um, editor to. 
so one crotchet is 140 and um, that's basically the beats the beats the, the speed that the tune is running at so that's what the uh, the letters are and that's what the um, the crotchet symbolizes the beats per minute basically this is the um, ABC technique I use for coding my tunes I find it a very simple and quick way of composing tunes and then getting them down and converted into some form of notation it's very simple if you play the let the, the um, note a on the a string you type a into the ABC editor if you play the note C you type C in and so on straightforward nice and easy um, you can tell what kind of tune it is you can tell it it's a polka you can give the timing um, you can give the key very basic but it works very well and um, as you can see there are lots of tunes that I've composed over the years um, and use, using ABC it's an easy way for me to store them. Because of the um, usefulness of notation and because I also provide the tablature for pretty much most of my tunes I feel that that gives most people, 99% of people I guess um, the opportunity to play along and use these tunes as they see fit. Um, I feel if I start sharing ABC coding on the community section it will get rather congested and confusing and it will probably generate more queries than I've got time to answer. So at the moment if you have a burning desire for a particular tune you would like the ABC please send me a, an, um, an email request and, and I'll send that back to you. But at the moment, I think I'll keep it nice and simple and just carry on publishing the notation and the tablature. Okay, now what metronome do I use? Well, I must be honest with you, I use the metronome provided by Reaper. Um, Reaper is what they call a sequencer. Well, they used to be called sequencers. They're now given the fancy term um, digital audio workstation. But basically it's like a giant multi-track tape recorder in effect. And if I put a new track on there to record um, I then put the clock on, the metronome there, and I then alter the speed to whichever speed I want it to go on. Say I'm doing a jig, I can just um, type in 6-8 there, I hope you can see this. That's 6-8 now on there, you see 6, uh, let me just make sure you can see that. Um, yep, 6-8 there, and you can see I'm running at 120 beats per minute. So I tend to run that. Um, I'll just put the speakers on now, so you can uh, you can hear this clock going. Um, why do I use Reaper? Well, um, I've used it for years um, because it's the cleanest interface there is out there that I've found. There are other sequences that you can use, um, which are just as powerful. Um, obviously ones like Ableton are very popular, um, Cubase is extremely popular, but I, I find I like the clarity of the very simple um, screen that I, I'm presented with when I start using um, Reaper. And if I hit the play button, that's what I hear. Now that doesn't always suit me so I just click on that and I can then alter, I can reprogram it. I can just go 
um, I want it to be A, B, B or A, B, yeah, just A, B, A, B, A, B. That will do me. That will do me nicely. So I, I just put an A in there and then a couple of dashes in there and then a B. I hope you can see this. And a couple of dashes. There we go. Now that should count nicely for me now. There you go. Da da di da 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 di do 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 do. Bit slow, really. I would normally go about one forty on that, but that gives you an idea of what I actually hear when I'm recording, um, very definitely, to a strict tempo. So if a band has sent me a, a track to record the fiddle part, they've sent me the beats per minute, they've sent me the stems. Um, I can explain what stems are in another video, but I then set my door to the tempo and I can hear through my headphones whilst I'm recording the exact um, tempo that I should be playing at. That's, that's really important. So that's what I use. I don't use anything else but um, this, this sequencer that you see on the screen. I hope that answers your query. and outros. How do we get into a tune? How do we exit a tune? The easiest way, if you're playing with two or three different musicians, is to count your way in. So with a tune like that, Bonaparte crossing the Rhine, which is in standard 4-4 time, you could just go one, two, three, and then that leaves the fourth beat for the pickup notes, which are so you go one, two, three. That gives everybody a chance to get in there at the start of the tune. So that's a nice easy way. There are other ways of course. You can play your way in. You could do something like this. And then straight in. Play something like that intro again. Now that's quite easy for me because I'm used to making tunes up on the spot. And I've done it for many years with Kaylee bands. I often just made up the introduction and counted my way in. Um, there are other ways of course. If you're playing some American music, old time fiddle music or bluegrass, you can shuffle. That's just simply playing a, um, a double stop. So you're leaving yourself, I think that's four bars probably. Two, three, four. Yeah, pretty much four bars. And then there's a sort of one, two, three, and then it steps in. Da, 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 and then you're straight in. So um, that's another way of doing shuffles. So shuffles are another way of getting yourself into the tune. Um, shuffles are good because for dancing it gives you four bar, a distinct four bar entry into a tune. Which um, for a square dancing, um, for Cayley dancing is necessary because the dancers need to know when to begin. 
So if you explain at the very beginning of the evening of the dance that you're going to be playing four bars in, or I usually just say four bar intro, and then most dancers will pick up on and so on. Most dancers will, will anticipate that starting point and away they go. And that's quite important. Another thing about um, being leading into a tune, starting a tune, is you've got to, prior to actually starting, you've really got to think very seriously about what the tempo should be, because it would be the easiest thing in the world to, to start too quickly. And um, with certain tunes, you can regret that, because you can be halfway through and thinking, goodness me, I've started this tune far too fast. Um, when I was first learning the fiddle, for a number of years, that was a real problem I had to overcome, being able to um, hold myself back. It's because um, when you're playing in front of a live audience, or when you're playing in a, in a session with other musicians, it's an exciting atmosphere. And um, it tends to reflect in your own keenness your sort of anxiousness to get on with the tune and play it. And it's very easy to slip into something too fast. I mean, uh, the worst one for me is, is Farewell to Erin. Oh, I regret going at that speed, whereas really I should go one, two, three. so on. So you can see actually thinking consciously before you start a tune, um, particularly a set of tunes, because if you play three tunes in a row, which I frequently do, um, if you start that first one too quickly, you're going to regret it, because by the time you're going towards the end of the, the third tune in the set, you're going like lightning, and uh, the smoke coming off the bow you really have got to be consciously aware that the speed must not be too quick. And it's amazing, if you listen to yourself on a recording, you can hear yourself playing too quickly. Now, you may be, you may be one of those people that has perfect tempo. But believe you me, I personally found it took me many years to get that tempo, that speed correct. And it wasn't until I started playing for seriously for dancers at Cayley's every week, week in, week out, that I started to really get the idea of controlling speed. Because quite frankly, dancers can't go if it goes too fast. Unless it's a square dance, in which case it can go like lightning at times. But anyway, so you've got to think about that. So shuffle bowing is another way of getting into a tune. Another good way is taking the very last far, four bars in a tune. So in other words, with that um, Bonaparte crossing the, the Rhine, the very last four bars in the B section go... So what I did there, I played the very last four bars in the B section. That's the piece of music I posted in the community section a week or so ago. So you should be able to find that okay. But the very last four bars in the B section go... So I basically played the last four bars 
and then that gave the signal for the dancers to join in um, with the start of the actual melody. So that's another way. Now if you're just playing that in a session, you would just come in with something like this. Three. You would just come in straight on the pickup note. Um, you might shout to a few of your friends, Bonaparte crossing the Rhine, but then they would actually listen to you starting the first couple of bars before joining in. Probably if I was practicing with the band, I would just go one, two, three, and then we'd go straight into it because it's pointless playing that the last four bars. Um, when you're in a band practice because it's just using up time. Um, also you can do the same thing with the last two bars I guess, the same thing. So you can basically just take on the last two bars of the B section of a tune and generally that will lead you into the start of the of the main section of the tune, the A section. If you're playing in 6-8 something like, um, well I've got the tempani bit here, I must have done this for another lesson of a week or so ago, anyway the tempani bit, um, yeah if I was counting this in because it's 6, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can't go 1, 2, 3 because it gets a bit confusing. You've got no space to put in your pickup notes. So what you do is just go 1, 2, 3, 4. Da, 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 da. I'll play it for you. 1, 2, 3, 4. and so on. So you basically just count that in one, two, three, four, and then the, the pickup notes would take up the last five and six, if you see what I mean. So one, two, three, four, five, six, which will be da, da, de, da. So basically that gets you in easily enough. Um, I guess you could use the last four bars for a jig as well. I'll play the last four bars. play the last two bars now yeah both of those work fine so you can play the last four bars or the last two bars of the B section of the tune and that will get you nicely into the start of the um, of the main section of the tune so that's the way to get into a tune how are you going to get out of the tune now I have different techniques to this because I must admit I love making up tunes on the fly. But what you can do, say you were playing um, Bonaparte Crossing the Rhine, the last four bars sound like this. Then, then what I would do, you could do, you could just repeat those last two bars. And then if you wanted to, you could point to the other band members and go again. So generally you could repeat the last two bars two or three times basically. And as long as you signal to everyone else, now it doesn't matter what signaling method you use, you, some people in session stick their foot out which might sound clumsy but it actually works because most people people can see your leg uh, being pushed out so some people just lift their leg basically um, another way is just to nod or you can just shout oh, out shouting out's a good way of doing it um, 
yeah, frequently with the band where it's very, very loud and you can hardly hear yourself think and you've got the drums playing, just shouting out and just repeating the last two bars works an absolute treat. So that's another way of doing it. Um, one thing I like to do with um, repeating the last two bars is, is this. make something up like that just to sort of finish the tune off da, 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 da. and then by I used to signal to the rest of the band then they could all see that long bow and they could all see me sort of waving gesticulating giving them all an angry stare and they knew that that was the last long note and it gives the guitar player a chance to go strum on the guitar the drummer a chance to go crash on the cymbal or whatever and the bass guitar if he's awake to go boom so basically it gives everybody a chance to hit that last note so See, a nice long note like that means everybody can finish at the same time. Basically, as long as you all start and finish at the same time, then great. It sounds quite good. So those are some of the ideas. Um, <clears throat> I've mentioned about the tempo, of course, repeating the last, four, last two bars, last four bars, and just making a little change. Now... <laughs> If you're a little bit shaky, let's say you're a little bit worried about starting a tune or finishing a tune, one thing you can do is you can play the tune before you go out on the gig or before you play with other band members and you can work out a little intro, you can practice those intros or you can practice the outros. If you're not, if you're not certain, if you're a little bit shaky about that practice it because it's no use on the night turning up and expecting to do a perfect intro and outro because it won't happen you've got to you've got to rehearse it you've got to practice it um that kind of just takes a bit of practice and you get used to it after a while and it you know, really becomes dead easy you don't even think about it then so someone shouts out, four bar intro straight into this set of tunes. You, you're straight into it. You know exactly what to do. Um, and that's just familiarity. The other thing is, um, if you're playing a set of tunes, let's play, say so you've put three tunes together. Um, I do this occasionally on some of my videos. Practice the change from one tune to the next. Do not think because you can play all three tunes individually perfectly, which I know you can all do that. Do not think you can change from one to another without practicing it. Now, it might just be me. I don't know. But I have difficulty sometimes. Um, members of the band will tell you I sometimes change into the wrong tune. It has been known because I don't use music on the stage. I don't. I do it. I do it all from memory. I'm not a big fan of having musical notation in front of me. I I, I just like to play as as the tunes from memory. That way I can see what's going on and I can enjoy the evening and I can relate the speed that I should be playing to the dancing speed. And I can see what's going on and feel what's going on. Now, so I practice the changes from one tune to the next. So I might play the last four bars of one tune and the first four bars of the next. And I'll do that quite a few times until I basically remember the set of tunes. And then what goes on in between really is easy because I know the tunes pretty much by heart anyway. But if I've put a new set of tunes together, it's important to practice the changeover from one tune to the next. 
So don't just think about intro and outro. Think about change over from one tune to the next. OK, um, that's really it with the um, intros and outros. If there are any more further questions about this, then leave a comment, please. And I'll do my best to, um, to try and give you any information that I possibly can. and out.